Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. This is Wine is Serious Business, episode 113, and we're here today to try a lineup of uh, wines from Idealist Wines out of Oregon here, so getting, getting back to some local wines. Got a really nice email from John Lyon, one of the owners of Idealist Winery, and uh, he, he, he said that he liked our show uh, because, you know, we're, we're really raw, which essentially means it's pretty unpolished, right? Like, low-budget stuff, a couple of guys sitting around talking about wine. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and I really like that, um, that that's appreciated, um, and, and he put it so well, right, because there's a lot of intimidation around it, there's a lot of professionals uh, giving very educated, very experienced opinions, which is great information, uh, but he said that he liked that what we're doing shows that it's okay for anybody to have an opinion about wine, and we feel really strongly about that. That's one of the things we liked about Seller Tracker, we like about following other wine blogs, is that Absolutely. it's a really democratic way of sharing information. And uh, that wine appreciation is for anybody who wants to get into it. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with that. Yeah. So uh, we're going to start out with a dry Gewurztraminer uh, called the Aristocrat uh, that they they send out. I think this was what just under twenty dollars a bottle. Yes. Like seven, seventeen dollars a bottle. All right. Sell tracker average like sixteen ninety a bottle. So. Okay. So yeah, just looking around trying to find some information. Two thousand ten. Online. Thirteen two alcohol. Have not tasted these, so. Kind of some cool stuff. Don't see a whole lot of conversion meter out of Oregon. No, so. not much. Just drank alcoves. It was it was decent. Yeah. The bottle they gave me with my uh, shipments. <sighs> kind of light on the nose, getting a little bit of apple. And the, the a little bit of nutmeg. Very reserved. It's not very cold. Not too cold. Just no. chill it down a little bit. Uh, I keep I keep my little in-house cellar. Uh, at uh, 60 degrees, so. And we did have the Pinot Noirs. They've been open for about an hour, probably something Absolutely. like that. Yeah, this we one, we this one's pop and pour. So. It's sort of muted aromas of like pear and apple, but a really really gentle nose. Nice full flavors on the palate. Wow, getting interesting uh, sensation that it's got to be coming from the skins of the grape, where it's kind of like a chalky. Like kind of like tannin feel, but I, I don't want to make it sound like it's super tannin. But yeah, the way it this, dries out is like a chalky feel. Yeah, it's, it's like a grape skin like, feel right down the center of the palate. There's actually some sort of grit there, not like in a harsh way, but mm -hmm. in a sort of like very sandy sort of chalky way. Starts yeah. out really light, but uh, as that texture settles in on the palate, there's a real burst of fruit flavors that I'm kind of digging. The pears he was talking about, I think, is coming in really fully. Um, plenty of acidity too, drying really. Really, really nice, yeah. yeah. And yeah, almost a tannic feel, like you were saying mm -hmm. earlier. Getting some of it down in the gums, which is like where you start to get it sometimes. You're probably going to see this, John. I'm curious, does this wine spend extra time on the skins relative to a lot of whites? Because it kind of reminds me of some of the like the Skin Master Pinot Gris, where you got that fuller structure to it, right? Yep. Got a little bit of that tannic feel. And maybe not. Maybe this is just coming from, coming from the press. Mm. A little bit of apple flavors going on in there, too. And definitely uh, a, a big white. Like there's there's a lot of body to this. Like you get a little bit of the alcohol in the back end, but but mostly with the acidity and that skin structure, and the flavors keep up with it. Um, so it's it's big, but the balance is retained. Um, digging it, I yeah, guess. It, it, it's definitely like a, for me it comes across as like a yellow apple with a lot wow. of lot of there you go. a lot of pear flavor, mm -hmm. which which I like. Like sort of like the white Asian pears. Um, coupled with like the green skins, like it's, you get some of that juiciness from the white pear. Um, but like Dan was saying, this is a large white wine. Like the amount of flavor that's left over on the palate once it's swallowed is still substantial. Like I'm still sort of tasting this wine. A little bit of tannic feel in the way that it kind of contacts the cheeks and the gums. Um, but man, the acidity is just ripe and delicious. It's uh, yeah, really interesting white wine. And, Definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like it, I like it quite a bit. So and uh, and and with that punch, I can see it. I, I yeah, like I think about it, drinking it with food. That's pretty appealing too. Uh, so I would I would love to like sit on a bottle of this for three or four years. I can see that and just see see what it turns into. I'm not telling you that it would 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 benefit. I don't, I have no idea honestly for coercive meter in, in Lent Valley, but uh, it would be interesting an interesting experiment based on the way this is tasting now. So edging its way into 87 points for me. Um, yeah, feeling pretty good about it. 
not gonna, uh, yeah, not freaking out, but uh, but but solid. And and want to go back to an interesting expression of the word demeanor that I haven't experienced otherwise. Yep, 88 points for me. 80, I go 80 plus actually. Um, very interesting. And uh, at sixteen dollars or seventeen dollars total, a total, a wine worth checking out. So nice. Uh, on to wine number two. We're gonna get these little glasses out of the way. Get some Pinot Noir glasses going. Uh, which one are we doing first here? Well, we're doing the uh, Diplomat. Diplomat, which is the more basic Pinot Noir. I think it's a uh, uh, two different vineyards. Yep. The, you go ahead and go ahead and run with it. While one, I'm yeah, one one kind of by McMinnville, and then one kind of down by uh, Dallas, Oregon which is sort of in the general area of Salem, I guess. This is getting towards the southern portion of the Willamette Valley. But a blend, uh, pretty affordable, right? This was, what, just over $20 yeah, or something like, like that? Yeah, 23 somewhere in there. And, and all of these were sent to us as samples, to be 100% clear about that. So mm -hmm. thanks for sending them. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is, this, this is the blend. Yeah, so, so an interesting contrast between the two wines here. I mean, so the, the idealist, or the... Uh, the Diplomat, which is the introductory one, is 13-2 alcohol. But when we step to the the historian, both from the same vintage, uh, different places though, different mm -hmm. blends here. Um, this this one, the the uh, historian is 100% Yamal Carlton, 15-2 alcohol. So big boy. Yeah, interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see how these wines. I'm are curious, made. but Yamal Carlton's big big wines, right? Like a lot of the stuff we like to drink from yeah. the ABA, they're it's historically powerful. powerful. Yeah. Well, strange. Yeah. yeah. And this is, I can smell it already, kind of coming out of the glass. It's uh, very inviting. Wow. Cool good. floral note, kind of some, an interesting tangy fruit thing going on here. Like cherries, but maybe like a, a like a hint of guava or something tropical that, that's, again, there's kind some, of unique in my tang experience. There. Yeah. There's some tang. It's like a little, little smoky. Is it like a little bit of smoke, not like the little smokies, hot dogs, and barbecues? I'm not getting that at all. Weird. But, but delicious. Like, we've got the, the strong red this? fruit component with a little bit of that Oregon funk. But man, it's like there's like an orange or like a, a something in there. And you take like some red cherries from the grocery store, some really good ripe cherries, and you put them on a grill. It's like that smoke. Ooh, man. And I like the orange peel too. Like, there's a little bit of citrus there. Yeah. Really cool nose. Smells good. Uh, ooh, yeah, I like the mouthfeel. Um, starts out gentle, getting a little bit of dusty tannins, uh, but they never get too heavy. Just giving a little bit of structure to it. The fruit stays light and approachable. Um, kind of has a bright character to it. Really easy, really approachable Pinot. Like the fruit, the fruit flavors here are super soft um, and inviting. Like cherries, strawberries. Hmm. The tannins sort of pick up a little bit in the in the mid palate. The structure like uh, provides some length to the finish, but the, the red fruit is just so easy. Mm -hmm. Kind of has like a floral yeah. feel to it too. Again, I don't go around eating roses a whole lot, but uh, my imagination is like, yeah, this this has kind of like a, a rosy component to the fruit on the palate. Get a little bit of oak on the back end, but I think it's used pretty well, right? Just that little bit of richness, a little, little bit of caramel flavors coming in. Yeah. yeah underneath the fruit. A little bit of that warmth, a little bit of that vanilla. Sort of entering into the finish. So, so yeah, a straightforward Pinot Noir here, mm -hmm. but at, at $22, $23, where the price point is on this, killer. Yep. Yeah. Pretty nice stuff. To, yeah. Delivers well. Go ahead. 89 plus for me. Mm, 88 for me. Um, I'm getting... And as we're tasting some wines tonight, I'm, I think I'm definitely a little more sensitive to the alcohol that Chaz is tonight. Mm -hmm. And then, to me, I'm feeling it a little bit on the back end. Um, no. But not, it, not for my palate. Yeah, and that, that's kind of why I wanted, wanted to bring that up, because I don't yep. think you're you're noticing it at all. So, um, you know, that kind of goes back and forth. Um, but I like I like the balance overall. I think everything's there, and, uh, and, and the light fruit, yeah, makes it approachable and easy to drink, I think, on a lot of occasions, too. So... Yeah, solid stuff. Absolutely. We've been getting a few more comments on the on the blog and on YouTube and on Facebook lately, so I really appreciate that. Uh, those of you who are getting in and making comments, Gavin, a uh, friend of ours, put a oh, comment yeah. up recently. That's awesome. Joey's been participating. Uh, thanks. You know, it's, yeah, great, great to see these comments. Getting some likes from people we've never seen before. So it's great to see more interaction. 
Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, feel free to talk. Yeah. That's how it is. A, a really good excuse to get into comments. We've been getting some interaction with winemakers more than I really even expected when we started doing this. So those of you who aren't involved in the business and have kind of like some questions that you'd like the winemakers to answer, I'd really encourage you to put them up in the comments because while they're not going to see them 100% of the time, I think a fair amount of the time, you know, the winemakers see these videos and, and would be happy to respond to questions that the audience would have about it. So start a conversation. And, and winemakers in Oregon have, are incredibly open. Like any questions I've ever had of any winemaker or any sort of emails I've ever sent have always been responded to with the utmost, like, all yeah. the information I was expecting and sometimes then even more. So the winemakers here are very, very enjoyable to talk to and willing to provide all the information you've ever asked. So and like many if you have small questions, business, do it. Yeah, and like many small businesses, they're happy They're happy to engage with people. And that's, like, honestly, I don't think Chaz and I would be in a position where we would have been excited about starting sure to, to do a show like this if they hadn't been so engaging here. So Absolutely. Everyone seems really excited in the Land Valley about what they're doing, and that's yeah. part of the enjoyment of this for us. It's, it's a lot of fun when everyone's sort of into what they're doing. And they make really good wines, too. So, so wine number three tonight is the uh, the Historian. Um, this is, like like Chad said, this is all Yamhill Carlton fruit. Um, also from the 2009 vintage, uh, in the little write-up online, uh, he talks about how this is an expression of the hot 2009 vintage. Uh, that it is going to be a bigger masculine wine, which coming from the Yamhill Carlton AVA, that's consistent with, I guess, the, the general sense that I get of that AVA. Absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, looking Which forward to checking it out. And I, I see, I see bigger, like especially in two thousand nine. I've seen some like lower alcohol wines from like closer to Rick Reel, like down at the very southern tip of the Eloy El Amity AVA. Yeah. But then you start to talk about Yamhill Carlton, which is much further north, and you're talking like yeah, a bunch of like fourteen fives, fourteen nines. It's very strange, very strange contrast. Like, why is that? I mean, I understand it has to do with the environment and some different soil types too, right? Like, okay. Darker soil in that AVA too. Yeah, it's very interesting. So, but Yangho Carlton, it's hard to it's hard to, to argue like argue this because I mean I love Dundee Hills, but man, Yangho Carlton has consistently produced some of my favorite pinots. Yeah, rock solid stuff. Yeah, so, mm. it's getting a little of that uh, sort of baking spice. Yeah. Aroma over cherries, like uh, almost like a pie cherry sort of thing going on, but you don't even need me. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, it's... I was, I was, I was just like, yeah, cherries and something, something, but yeah, the ba the baking spice is dead on. Even, even a little, little like a, even a little bit of buttered crust in there too of the pie. It's, it's, it's a really inviting nose, but there is definitely some alcohol coming through on this nose that I can detect. Yep. No, no question. A little bit of it there. I'm getting some citrus with that too, and I think uh, like like mm -hmm. oranges with the peel, like you yeah. just sliced into an orange. I would, I would completely agree with that. And I like that you're getting like the the dark and the light cherries too. There's some good complexity on those. There is. Fun nose. Good ripe fruit. Again, ripe like. Nice dark cherry flavors. They kind of sit in the center of the palate. Uh, definitely has a bigger body to it. That spice that you're talking about is showing all the way across. All the way, yeah. A little bit of the wood is showing as well. A little bit of a little oakiness mm -hmm. showing sort of on the finish, but paired with the uh, the intensity of the fruit flavor here and the the spiciness that we keep talking about, really really nice. Everything sort of integrates really well when you swallow it on the tongue and. 10, 10, 15 seconds, seconds later, I've still got a wallop of that like fruit flavor in the center of my tongue. Yeah, it really just kind of sits there. Yeah, awesome. Nice, well, well done for such a big wine. Um, it, it, it's tough. It's tough when you've got this much alcohol. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get spottiness. Sometimes the alcohol starts to overcome the fruit flavors, which I've had many times in wine. Um, this is somehow able to retain a certain sense of balance. But it's, it's, it's definitely, we're pushing the levels of balance, like bending it just a little bit. That's a good so. way to put it, right? Like, I'm definitely feeling the heat. There's definitely kind of some, some pressure from the heat mm -hmm. on the fruit towards the back end. Like we said, I'm a little more sensitive to that, to that tonight. Um, so I feel that kind of clearing things out at the back, but it doesn't do it entirely like that. That fruit lingers, getting a little bit of that oak sensation that lingers in the back end. Some tannins on the side, and, just a little bit. And more with that, the caramel flavors on the oak as opposed to uh, vanilla. Okay. So much, and and that that complements the uh, the dark cherry as well. 
Absolutely. Sort of like the, uh, the dark chocolate covered cherries. Just a little bit there. Yeah. Um, but man. Touch of minerality on the mid palate, which I'm kind of digging. For, for such a big wine, definitely not a style that I'm like more into that regularly. I mean, like, I definitely love big wines, right? But uh, pushing the. Uh, I guess I shouldn't even say that. Like, I do like big wines. Yeah. yeah when, when you when you push the alcohol content, like my brain starts to say this is going to be big. It's going to be too huge. I, I already said that this wine somehow shows a sense of balance within a 15 two percent alcohol range. Well done in that style. I'm going to go 90 points because yeah. you've got complexity. Wow. You've got lots of body. You've got lots of flavor. And you've got a finish that runs on for a long time, and the alcohol doesn't kill it, right? Like, I've had wines at this level where the alcohol completely destroys the flavor. and the Especially in the right finish, now. right? Exactly. There's a lot of risk for that. But it's hot. You, you, you're getting a hot wine here. You're getting a big wine here. It's just, it's able to uh, overcome that flavor is. And I'm getting, like, some nice bright cherry things that linger on the end, which, I, which I'm enjoying quite a bit, too. Um, that said, it's going to take it to 88+. plus. Uh, eh, well, 80, 89 minus for me. Take it up, take it up a little bit. Still a little sense of that alcohol. I really like the flavors that are going on. I like the fact that you get that dark fruit with some minerality. Um, yeah. So, and definitely like two different styles. I think uh, regardless of what type of wine you like to drink, I think you can let that kind of guide your decision pretty well, right? Like mm -hmm. if you like the lighter, more floral style of Pinot Noir, this is definitely more up your alley. If you like it to be bigger and have somebody, I had a great discussion with somebody over the over the holiday weekend uh, where the guy said, uh, you know, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I, I, I honestly like to know that I'm drinking some alcohol, right? Like when I have wine, I like it to have a little bit of punch. And while I personally don't really identify with that all the time, I know there are a lot of wine drinkers who feel that way. And that brings it home. So speaking to that point, uh, my girlfriend's father is a regular whiskey drinker. Yep. Loves that sort of peak of that rush of alcohol in the throat. So when I provided him with a Cali Cab that started out at 15.5 alcohol, and I was sort of struggling with the balance of it. I was like, there's too much heat here. He was really enjoying it. He was like, I like that rush of heat. Like that, that tells to me the alcohol's there, and that's it's, it's part of why he was drinking it. So, and interesting words, that's not acknowledged. It's, just, it's different yeah. palates. It's different palates, different, uh, different experiences at that point. So. And, and cool to see that acknowledged from the get go, right? With the story of, of the of the wine, right? It's like a from a powerful AVA in a hot vintage. This is a wine that expresses that. I'm in total agreement. Complete respect to that. Yeah. Um, and it's a good wine. I, I scored nine points. It's it's good wine. So if you like hot wine, go check it out. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, here we are again, trying to think of a question of the day on the spot. Um, my my brain is not. Boy, I'm sensitive to alcohol today. My brain is slow. It's a long, long day today. No, no. So, so 2010 Oregon Pinots are, are hitting the market. Um, I've, I've read a good, a good amount on Berserker um, about the wines. I know a lot of people that watch us are from Oregon. What has been your favorite 2010 Oregon Pinot so far? Easy question. For, for me, it, for me, it's that Teutonic wine, Laurel Vineyard. That's 11 percent. Completely outside the box. It's just so weird. I love it. I love it. It's like juice, man. And that's good that you know. Like I don't have an answer for that yet. Like okay. I'm, st I'm still getting to know them, and, and again, my brain's slow, so I don't have anything off the top of my head. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll have a link for Idealist Wines uh, down below. And thank delicious. you for the samples. Uh, they were they were delicious wines. So yeah, looking forward to drinking some wine with you someday. Hopefully, see so. you guys next time. One fourteen.